Good morning, I'm Mackie Shellstone. And I'm Spencer Shellstone. We've been focusing, and this is what, week three? Week three. On the forgotten core. There's a, a referencing an article that I read recently, recently with that title. And most people, as we've talked about over the coming last couple of weeks, think about the core as just the abdominal musculature, up and down, across, and internal and external obliques. And it's so much more, as we said. Absolutely. I mean, the, when you think about the core, if you're just thinking of the abs, well, you're only thinking about the front of your body. The core is all around you and it surrounds your spinal column. And I've used the term in years past, this is like number year 26 for me, of stability mobility. And that's the key in professional sports, but it's also the key in everyday in li living. All right, so you have a band, and yep. because uh, we're going to use this anchor down here as a kettlebell and me, but Spencer, we could also tell people they don't need that. They could hook with a carabiner anchor it, to a fence. Anchor it to a fence, to a squat rack. Clip it on. Clip it on. You could even lock it in under a door. All it has to be is at the floor height. And uh, well, we don't have any of those things here, so we're making do. So what's it called again? This is the bandit pull through. So, and the muscles, it's functioning to a So bring... we're focusing on similar movement patterns of a deadlift or a kettlebell swing. So it's gonna be mainly in the back area, but because we're pulling it through, we're gonna feel a lot at the lower core. And a little bit of slight bend in the knees, right? Correct. All right, well, I'll be, go back to my anchor position. I'll well, move. you're the anchor. I'm the anchor this time. No, I'm I'm going. Oh, you, oh, that's right. Yeah. I, I've been thrown off the desk, off the couch. How about that? There you go. So I'm going to anchor it. And what Mackie's going to do is he's going to go out a little bit farther so he gets enough tension. And then he's going to hinge forward. Now hinge forward, let yourself drop. Feel it right there. And then pull back up. Squeeze at the top. Now come back down. Go back up, squeeze at the top, just like if you were doing a kettlebell swing. Come back down and squeeze at the top. Now, and my chin is neutral. Correct. Now remember, you want to make sure that you're breathing during this, because if you're not breathing, you won't be activating the pelvic floor muscles. Now, you, Spencer's going to do it with a variation with one hand at a time. Correct. So we're going to face the camera this time. And when I, the reason why I'm doing it one-handed is what it's going to make me do is I'm going to have to compensate for the fact that my body wants to lean this way, wherever the tension's coming from. So I have to make sure that I can maintain it straight this way. And I am going to hold the kettlebell down in the anchor position. All right. Ready? So again, I'm at the top point. I'm getting some tension. And then I'm going to come down. And I can feel the stretch right in my hamstrings and come back up. Squeeze at the top. Don't let my body rotate and go back down, squeeze at the top. Again, don't let yourself rotate. And that's gonna be the one-handed version. Now again, if you're trying to build strength, go six to eight reps. But if you're doing endurance like you should start with, try to go to 15, even 20 reps. And that may mean a, a thinner cable, a cord right here. Correct. So Spencer, next week, we're going to become sumo wrestlers. Yeah, we're going to be doing the sumo squat, which is going to be really beneficial for helping our groin muscles uh, as well as our glutes. Now, keep in mind, if I don't come back weighing about 400 pounds, then you'll have to assume I'm a sumo wrestler, right? I'm the lightest sumo wrestler in the world, right? You are. Okay. All right. We'll see you next week. I'm Mackie Shulstone. I'm Spencer Shulstone. Yeah, Stay I'll, strong. Yeah, really.